Okay, so this is an IGCC introduction into 7B radioactivity. So quantities, we've got the idea of a Becquerel defined as the activity of a quantity of radioactive material in which one nucleus decays per second. Becquerel is therefore equivalent to what we call the inverse second or per second. So it would be number of nuclei that change per second. We sometimes use the idea as well as the sievert. Sievert's the amount of energy you might receive from a dose of radiation. And the units for that are joules per kilogram. So it's imagining if your body received so many uh, becquerels of radiation, you could convert that to how many joules you've received per kilogram, which is a good comparison because everyone's a different size. So that tells you really how much energy that you've received, which is often used in industry. You might also see millisievert or millisievert, which is one times 10 to minus three sieverts, or it could be millibecquerels, but you've got the two there. Typically, it's about activity. They occasionally have questions where they talk about the sievert, but you're not really expected to know sievert off the top of your head. They give you a little bit more. We should know our atomic structure from chemistry. So atomic mass number A, Z proton number, or number of protons, uh, atomic number. 88Z is the number of neutrons, because we know that not all atoms have the same, like this one does, but uranium clearly doesn't. We should know how to use the AZX notation, and uh, we should know all the symbols, the so neutron, proton, etc., electron. Um, alpha, beta, gamma. So if you have radioactive decay, we get alpha, beta, or gamma emitted. Often, when we've had a beta particle or alpha particle emitted from a, a nucleus, we also get gamma, but sometimes we just gamma. It's a random process. We can't predict when it's happening. We can't affect when it happens. It just happens. Um, also, atoms or nuclei may be split and produce neutron radiation as well. All of these particles always can damage humans or can be useful in industrial or medical processes, which you should know some examples of. Geigerbella tubes then. So what do they do? Well, they detect ionizing radiation. It enters a tube for a thin micea window. It ionizes gas and that produces an electrical current, which triggers a count on a device. And you've got a difference in potential, maybe naught and 400 volts between the electrode on the middle and the outside. That's what helps to, to trigger off that count. <clears throat> The background radiation, you should know that uh, radiation could be man-made or natural. All of that adds up to the dose from the environment we live. So you've got stuff from rocks, gamma rays from the soil and space. You've got cosmic rays. You've got medical and x-rays. You might work somewhere in a power station. You might be fallout from nuclear weapons programs. Um, you could have discharge from a nuclear reactor and you could just go on holiday. So you do get quite a lot of radiation just by going on a plane. Cellular effects, you should have a good idea about how you can have accurate repair, inaccurate repair, or cellular death. So there are three things typically, and if it's inaccurate, it may grow into a tumour, which is a cancer, which could be treated by medical process to do with alpha, beta, and gamma. So actually, alpha, beta, gamma can cause cancer, um, but you can also kill cancers with another focused treatment of radiation. There you go, that's 7B radiation.